What's going on, everybody? It's David from the 80s, and you are now entering the Cinema Chop Shop, so park your ass right there. And while you're there, don't forget to hit the like, the share, and the subscribe button. Also, if you check the link below, you see a Patreon account. You click it, you can become a member. All you got to do is try recommend movies and music and trailers for me to react to. Now, with that being said, we are here today with a review for... What are we reviewing today? We are reviewing Space Jam Legacy, uh, starring LeBron James, uh, Don Cheadle, uh, that has a freaking huge sports star cast. Um, this movie is the sequel to the original Space Jam, which starred Michael Jordan. Um, I went into this movie thinking that this movie was going to suck. It was going to be terrible. It was going to be trash. But it wasn't that great, but it was a lot better than I thought it would be. Uh, so a quick synopsis is that LeBron James uh, being... The way that he learned how to play the game was that you have to put everything to the side and focus only on the game. You can't have time for anything else. Uh, he tries to push this onto a son who he feels like has the potential to be great. Uh, and he's trying to push his kid to reach that greatness, but his kid isn't really into that. His kid wants to do uh, other things, computer computer uh, tech, tech stuff. Um, and because of this, there's like this evil app, uh, which is Don Cheadle or program and he's upset that LeBron James kind of like throws one of his ideas in the trash. This, I guess this AI system is self-aware. Uh, because LeBron James does this, he devises a devious plot to bring LeBron James and his son into the server uh, and turn his son against LeBron. And basically LeBron James has to play against Don Cheadle's basketball group uh, and win in order to I guess get his kid back and send everybody else back. Um, the idea itself, I mean, it's kind of corny. It's not the greatest idea ever, but this is a kid's movie. We have to keep that in mind. This movie is strictly for kids. So I'm not going to really like dissect the hell out of the fact that the storyline wasn't even all that because it wasn't. Uh, the idea was not a literal basketball game. Uh, it was more so along the lines of like playing his son's basketball game. The son designed an app. That app turned out to be a video game. And in a video game, you get more points for doing certain things. So I like, think like uh, NBA hang time or uh, NBA street. But instead of like, you know, those points that you rack up while doing stylish st stuff. I mean, uh, you know, that's your score instead of, you know, you made a three, you made a two, those type of things, right? Um, so... Basically, it's like a coming of an age thing. LeBron James learns a lesson, and at the end, you, and then at the end, he learns how to deal with his kid and be more acceptive of it. Blah blah blah, yakety smackety, whatever. Right? Uh, I mean, the biggest flaw in this movie is LeBron James acting. LeBron James acting is terrible. It's like really, really bad. Like, um, like to the point where I was like, I this movie is almost unwatchable. The more I hear him talk. And people can say, yo, you're just a hater. You're just hating. Uh, Michael Jordan wasn't that better. He wasn't. But Michael Jordan didn't have huge amounts of dialogue. Uh, also, Michael Jordan wasn't in it to become a movie star. LeBron James, from this point on, is going to want to enter Hollywood. That's a fact. That's his goal. So I know that he's going to be in more movies. Michael Jordan wasn't trying to be in a bunch of movies. He just got approached with an idea and just ran with it. And... It just turned out to be a huge hit. This movie, I mean, I think it's going to, it's expected to do 30 million in uh, COVID times. Uh, that's pretty good for a movie that's also available on streaming and in movie theaters. So that's not bad. But, you know, like Mark, uh, LeBron James just was taking me out of it, you know? Um, also, another thing I didn't like, I didn't like the CGI cartoons. Uh, that was pretty lame. Um, I felt like it, maybe it should have kept it to the traditional. Um, cartoon i know that they're trying to play more towards the modern day audience and modern day audiences i guess are more hip or more uh attracted to the whole 3d imagery but i thought i thought the whole uh, the idea of the cartoon and realistic thing was really cool uh the middle of the movie dragged it felt like all that was was like a huge warner brothers promo they could have cut all of that out all of that stuff was repet like it just didn't even need to be done in my opinion you know that whole middle segment was just, I didn't get the point. It dragged. This this movie has a two hour runtime and I really felt like that didn't need to be in there. 
some of the positives. Uh, I mean, you know, aside from the cartoon characters are always fun. Watching Bugs Bunny, Daffy, Porky Pig, and everybody do um, what they always what they come to do. That's pretty tight, man. You can't hate on that. Like, you know, it's 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 always fun to watch those original cartoons get down and do the things that they, you know, what they're supposed to do. Uh, I did find it kind of interesting that Pebbly Pew was removed from this movie because of like, you know, some SJW, like, oh nonsense but then again you have scenes in the movie that might be inappropriate you got people drinking alcohol you have people uh pretending to be drunk you know and it's like you're worried that supposedly this is going to teach kids how to be a womanizer but you're over here you got this old lady drinking martinis you got bugs acting like he drunk off a of carrot beer or carrot juice or whatever you know uh but you know like it's just i don't know like we are we going to go like that's the thing. If you're going to do this, at least go. If you're going to say that you're in it, you're doing this strictly for the kids and for the betterment of the kids, then go all the way. You know, make it squeaky clean. Don't try to be like, oh, I'm just going to add, take that part out because I don't like that part. But we can keep all the other stuff in. You know, uh, it's either take it all out or don't take nothing out. That's the way I look at things. Um, but yeah, LeBron James acting was terrible. The cartoons characters were fun to watch. The jokes were low-key kind of fun. Don Cheeto's character, oh, my God. Don Cheeto's character at times was kind of likable. Like, he said some funny stuff, but then he just went over the top with it. And he just was, how like, I don't know. Like, I felt like he was just trying too hard to be evil, and I was just, I just couldn't get into it. Um, like, this movie doesn't hold anything to the original Space Jam. We all knew that was going to happen. Uh, but is this movie enjoyable? It's pretty enjoyable. Uh, there's a really cool cameo in it. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but there's a very funny cameo in here. And when you guys see it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But, you know, oh, another thing. I was digging the whole Warner Brother properties watching the uh, the game. So you have like the Penguin from Batman. You got freaking Game of Thrones people. You got Harry Potter, you had Baltimore, you had the Flintstones, you had the Jetsons, you had, uh, what is it, the Humanoids, uh, you had uh, Jab, what's his name, Jabberjaw, like you had all of these really cool old school characters like Hanna-Barbera, Iron Gi Hanna-Barbera style characters, you had the Iron Giant, you had King Kong, it was tight, like, you know, some of the, I honestly found more enjoyment looking at the crowd than I did, you know, the, <laughs> the regular movie, but like at the end of the day, bro, it's like, some of them costume designs was terrible, bro. Like the dude that played the mask was standing in the audience. I know it's not supposed to be top tier A1 or whatever, but at the same time, you could have made it look a little bit better. This movie honestly took place majority in a green screen area. So it's not like this movie had hella sets and hella, um, like you're on a Warner Brothers lot. You were maybe in a basketball court at one time. This, this movie has very, very small sets, right? Most of it took place in a green screen room. Let's keep it a buck. So the fact that you couldn't put a little extra money into all this, into some of these other character designs, I mean, that kind of that, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. You know, you got the mask out here looking like a crackhead. You know, I I wasn't I wasn't feeling that. Um, it was another character too. You could clearly see like the mask lifting off of his neck, and I was just like, yo, are we in the '80s? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, are we in the '80s? Like, we doing we doing it like that? Like, okay, tight. Like, you want people to know that they're wearing makeup and mask. Okay, cool. That's what we're doing. Uh, I believe the director did Under, Undercover Brother, some other low-key movies. They were like low-key hits, uh, but, you know, this movie to me really didn't need to be made. Um, it's kind of serves no purpose, uh, but from, like, watching it, it was enjoyable, but not to the point where I would say, yo, you need to go out and watch this. Uh, it wasn't bad. I thought this movie was going to be like really dookie, really boo boo, but it wasn't all that bad. So here in the cinema chop shop, we grade movies in three ways, kind of three ways. Either you get body this into the bowels of hell, either you get spared, meaning you barely made it through, or you get, you know, not say body spared, whatever. You know the you know the drill to the point. Um, I am going to spare. No hell no, I'm not going to spare this damn movie. You 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 crazy boy, bodied in this bitch. Get 
Yeah, guys, I'm body in this movie. I'm, it honestly doesn't need to be viewed. Uh, it's kind, of, it's all right, but it's not all right to the point where I'll say, "Yo, you should go ahead and check it out." Even on a rainy day, this is something that you don't need to watch. You don't need, to, you don't need to pay money to go see. You don't really need to dedicate time into going to go watch this movie. It's not that good, you know. It's, it's like I said, it's entertaining. If you want, if you got kids, you just want to entertain them for a little bit. That's cool. That'll work out. But at the same time, it's not something that's good enough to the point where I feel like it was a good, cool story. And, you know, it just didn't live up to the hype, even though it had no hype. <laughs> well, it wasn't, at least it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I mean, I can give it that much, but, you know, it was still pretty damn bad. So you are now exiting the cinema chop shop. I hope you guys are having a magnificent day and adios, homies. <laughs>